Good morning and welcome. It's great to have you with us today and uh, what a great Bible study on the justice loving God uh, given by uh, Pastor Mary Detch and also uh, our worship uh, with uh, our ministry uh, worship leader uh, Tammy Crawford and what a great uh, ministry together. I hope you sang along and enjoyed uh, the time together. Now I want to bring to you a message today that uh, uh, is about the wonderful God we serve and the fact that you are not alone. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to turn with me to Psalm number 139. Psalm number 139, if you have that in your Bibles, and uh, that's where we're going to be reading. And in, we're going to begin with verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 18. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, the darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect and in thy book all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for your promises. God, I praise you and I glorify you, and I know without any doubt that you, dear Lord God, are walking with us every moment of our lives. And I ask that we would understand this and that we, be, we would be given uh, assurance in this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. I want to read to you just a little bit out of Jeremiah chapter 29 as well, verses 11 through 13. It says, and this is God speaking to his people. And by the way, he is speaking to his people uh, in Jeremiah chapter 29 uh, when they have been taken into captivity in Babylon. This happened about 600 BC, so uh, a little less than 3,000 years ago, uh, about 600 BC, uh, when uh, both Israel and Judah, which had separated at the time, were taken into captivity. And they were in a situation where they were secluded. They were not in their own land. They were not in a place where they were comfortable. They were captive. And God speaks these words through Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 29. And he says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then you shall call on me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall Seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And so God is telling them, I see you in captivity. I see you in this place that you are very uncomfortable. I see you in this place that you have been taken captive. And, and you and I are living in a day and time where we are not taken captive by another nation but we are taken captive by this uh, virus that is going around and is uh, keeping us secluded. Our governors are giving us uh, stay-at-home orders, and now it's safe at home, 
shelter in place, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're very uncomfortable in this situation because we're used to being able to gather together and, and hug one another, shake each other's hand. And uh, many of us uh, find a great comfort in the uh, presence of others, in, in being able to meet with others and uh, to be able to share what we're going through so that we can uh, face uh, temptations, trials, tests, and know that someone else is there. Well, first of all, we are still here, uh, but the most important thing is that even when you are at home alone, even when you are sheltering in place or safer at home or whatever the condition that is set presently might be, that God is still there and he knows you and he's watching over you. And he is going to take care of you. And I want to speak to you about that a little bit this morning, about the omnipresence of God. And this is one of the attributes that is can be a great comfort for us today in this present situation uh, during this time when we're in an imposed isolation from others. And I want to go back to the beginning. And uh, we know the story. Many of us know the story. If those of you don't know the story of the creation of the earth, I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. But basically, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 begins by simply saying, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we know that from that scripture on, in chapters 1, 2, and 3, we uh, find out about the creation of the earth, and we find out about the fall of man and how this all came to be and how we are in the current circumstances that we're in, in the fact that we uh, live in a world of sin uh, and we found a couple of weeks ago, we studied about how that we have a Savior that forgives us of our sin. But one of the great attributes of this God of the universe, the one true almighty God, is that in the beginning, before all of this occurred, God existed. He has always existed. And these are some concepts that we have a very difficult time wrapping our mind around. But I can tell you this, God is everywhere. I don't know how, but there he is in this vast universe. And I have uh, I have put a like of a couple of videos on our church's YouTube channel. Uh, if you'd like to go there and watch it now, uh, it is some of them are a couple of them. They are science based. And so there are those that are trying to promote the Big Bang uh, the second one that I liked is much better, and it really doesn't talk that much about the Big Bang and the creation as much as it talks about how vast this universe is. My wife Janet and I uh, went to uh, on a vacation here a year or two ago, and we went to an observatory-type place that uh, we sat in a room, and they gave us a great presentation uh, beginning at the Earth, and expanded out into the universe and uh, went out past the known universe. And, and we saw how vast it is that this planet revolves around a sun, uh, which is actually a star that makes up uh, the Milky Way galaxy. And there are untold number of galaxies out there. And when you go out there and you expand out and you see just how vast this universe is, and you recognize that the God of this universe created that universe. And the Bible says that God spoke and the stars came into existence. And and uh, I, in one of the videos, uh, and none of these, and I did a little research on this, none of these actually know how vast the universe is. And in fact, they will tell you in their videos, they don't understand some things that are out there. They don't understand how certain things work. But you and I can have a good understanding of knowing that the God who created it all is the designer of it all, and he knows it all, and he's got it all in his hands and all in his control. They don't understand how that the uh, universe is expanding and how that it is, is continually getting larger. They said that their best estimate is that the, uh, the universe, the known universe right now, is approximately somewhere between 60 and 150 billion light years. Now, it's hard for us to put our minds around that. I don't want to go into that too much, but I can tell you that a light year, and I don't even know how to say this number, so I'm just going to give you the commas. 
is 5, 878, 499, 817, 000 miles. That's how far light travels in a year. That is over 100 billion miles. And when you think that the universe is over 100, and, uh, over 100 billion light years across, that's what they know about what they have calculated the known universe to be, uh, that is amazing. And when you think about how large the universe is, now you begin to imagine just how incredible this God is, how amazing our God is that he is everywhere in this universe. There is not one thing that transpires in this universe that he is not aware of. And the amazing thing about that is that in the midst of all of this vastness and somewhere out beyond the darkness, somewhere out beyond this universe, somewhere out beyond what our eyes can see through even the most uh, amazing telescopes that we have, there is a heaven where the light of God is lighting that section of the universe all the time. We are living in a vast place that this amazing all-powerful, all-knowing, understanding God is inhabiting. And yet, he looks in the midst of all of this darkness, in the midst of this sector of the universe, and he creates this planet. And he looks not only at the planet, but he looks at the creation of the planet. And on the sixth day, he says, let us make man in our image. And he is mindful of us. In the beginning, God set the pattern. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere at once. In Psalm 139 that I read to you, he said, I, this knowledge is far too uh, wonderful for me. I can't even fathom this. He said, you, you have uh, gone before and behind me. You, you are everywhere. Where can I go? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I go to hell, you're there. If I, if I rise up in the morning and go to the uttermost parts of the sea, you're there. He said, if darkness covers me, you're there. And you see, because the darkness doesn't hide anything from you, it's as the light of day. This is spectacular to us. And yet this God, almighty God, wants to be personal with us. He wants to have a communal relationship with us. And he created man so that he might have that relationship with us. And he said, it's not good that man would be alone. He creates woman. And so that man and woman can get together and multiply and replenish the earth and, and subdue it and take dominion over it. And in the midst of that, we find that God is walking in the garden with them. Why? Because he takes personal interest in them. And scripture tells us that he takes personal interest in us today. Um, and in Amos chapter 9, uh, it gives us the vastness of God. It says uh, that there are those that are enemies of God. God is going to pursue them. And he says, though they dig into hell, verse 2, Amos chapter 9, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence I will bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, if they go into the dark caves, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence I will command the servant and he shall bite them. God is saying, you can't hide from me. I am everywhere. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 and 24. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, and there is none else. Joshua chapter 2, verse 11. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Now this is uh, Rahab the harlot who is in Jericho, and she is hiding the spies that were sent from Israel into Jericho. And she's talking with them about why she is hiding them, why she is going to be on the side of the Israelites. And she says, when all of us here in Jericho heard these things, our hearts melted inside. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you for the Lord your God. He is God in heaven above and the earth beneath. 
They even understood that. In Jericho, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and good. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 1, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is thy throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is this house that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? He's saying that I don't, I'm not confined in a church. I'm not confined in a temple. And we understand this, and this is great encouragement for us today because we're unable to meet in our building, in our physical location, and we long for the day when we can return together and we can embrace one another and we can spend time together face to face. We're looking forward to that day, but I am here to tell you, my friend, the church is not a building. God is not confined in a building. We don't have to go to that location in order to have communion with God and even to have communion with his saints. We are bound together. We are united together in an in the power and the spirit of God that has no limits, that is not limited by any walls. And God says, you can build a temple for me, but that's not where I'm going to be abiding at all times. Uh, I, I will be there and I will put my presence upon that place, but the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. How will you be able to contain me? You and I have to understand this omnipresence of God is amazing. He is phenomenal. He is everywhere all at once. And he takes personal interest in you and I. Last week, I spoke to you about the Holy Ghost and how that Jesus said when he left, he would not leave us comfortless, but he would pray the Father and the Father, he would uh, He would petition the Father and the Father would send another comforter. Now, that's not just somebody to give you a big hug. That's not just somebody to wrap his arms around you and say, hey, it's going to be okay. I'm here. But the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost is present in us and lives in and through us and around us because he is going to bring God's word to our remembrance. He is going to give us that comfort of being with us and leading us and directing us and filling our mouths when he needs to. We have to understand God is everywhere. He is in every one of us. He is working with us to be able to, to not only give us, yes, the comfort and, and hope that we need and the peace of mind, but he's here to help us in these days to be able to continue to spread the gospel, to be able to continue to work. And, and when we feel isolated and we feel alone and we feel like we, we, we are just separated from everyone, God in heaven is taking a personal interest in you and he is touching you today and he is there for you today if you will only allow him to be. In John chapter 14. Uh, that's where he said, I will pray the Father and he will send this comforter upon you. And uh, the power of the Holy Ghost would come. And we talked about that last week in depth. But not only is God's presence with us, not only is the Holy Ghost with us, and not only is the God of the universe just everywhere and taking a personal interest in us, but he also commands the angels of heaven, these spiritual agents that are dispatched from the throne of God to be able to be with us in challenging times. In Psalm number 91, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. This is again talking about how God's presence overshadows us. He will shelter us under his wings and under those wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night Night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, for, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it now shall not come nigh to thee. Only with thine eyes thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation." There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. God is telling us we do not need to be afraid of any of these things. Why? Because one, 
He is sheltering us and he has us under his, the feathers, under his wings. He is sheltering us and he dispatches angels on our behalf in order to be able to fight the spiritual battles the enemy is trying to, to fight against us with. In Daniel chapter 10, we find that Daniel was troubled by the visions he had been receiving and by the things coming upon the earth. And uh, uh, in Daniel chapter 10, an angel appears and says, uh, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard by God, and I am come to thee. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So, for 21 days, there was this spiritual battle. My friend, God understands. He is sending his angels on your behalf. They are being dispatched to come to you. In fact, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2 tells us, Let brotherly love continue, but be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And we know several other mentions of angels in the Bible, how the angels were sent to Abraham and, and Sarah and comforted them and, and told them of the coming child that they would have, uh, the child of promise. And, and uh, there are many other times that we hear about angels being dispatched throughout Scripture. You are not alone. You have the God of the universe all around you, living in you, and he's dispatched angels to fight on your behalf, to be with you, and to walk with you, and uh, he will never leave you alone. He has promised you will never be left alone. Genesis chapter 28, behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest. I will bring thee again into this land, he's telling Jacob, uh, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Now today you might be feeling like you just don't know where God is. You don't know uh, what he's doing. You don't have any sense that he is anywhere around you, but I am here to tell you, my friend, God is right there with you and he is on the throne. He is going to take care of you. He is going to show you uh, his uh, presence in your life. He has you in his hands. He says in Isaiah chapter 43, now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, he said, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. And he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I am here to tell you, my friend, you are not alone. This God who somehow, some way, encompasses the entirety of the universe and beyond has you in his hand. He created you from the very building blocks of each cell of your body. The psalmist said, you wrote of my numbers. In other words, you know all the details of me. One scripture says the very hairs of your head are numbered, Jesus said. I have joked a bit about that recently and said that uh, it's a lot easier for him to keep track of that in my case uh, as I've gotten older. But I can tell you this, God knows all the details of your life. He knows you physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. He knows you and he's there with you. And you can turn to him and put it all in his hands and know that this God of the universe takes a personal interest in you. And if you will seek him, you will find him when you seek him with all your heart, and he will walk with you in the cool of the day. He will be with you in your home. He will be with you when you are able to get out wherever you go. God is with you, and he wants you to know that today. He is the omnipresent God, and you are not alone. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for showing us your word today. I pray, dear God, that we would bring you, Lord, our hearts, our concerns, our desires. God, that we would take to you every need that we have 
and every hurt that we feel. And I pray, dear God, that you would just send us your word and your blessing today and allow us to live our lives completely in your hand. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Now, friend, wherever you are today, I want you to just put whatever you're dealing with in God's hands. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you can accept him as your Savior today. He will be with you in all things. You just confess your sin to God. Just lay them right out there. He already knows about them. He just wants to hear it from you. Confess your sin. Admit you're a sinner. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Accept that the blood of Jesus Christ that applies to your sin when he died on the cross. And then commit your life to God that you will live for him to the best of your ability in the days and years to come until he returns to call you home. If you need assistance with this, contact us. We'll pray with you. If you do accept Jesus as your Savior, contact us. You can go through our website with the contact form. We'll be glad to respond. If you have other prayer requests or concerns, please contact us the same way. Call me, send me an email, send me a text, or contact us through the website. We will be glad to be there for you and pray with you. We love you, God loves you, and you are not alone. God bless you. Have a great day. Enjoy this beautiful sunshine here in Colorado and the warmth. May God go with you.